is acting like it's got some place to go, don't it? Got one brown bear. He's coming straight up that ridge. It's big. <laughs> it's really big. Can't hunt brown bears in Tahiti, baby. <laughs> go looking for adventure. And then there are those that live it every day. Alaska Outdoors Television. Experience Alaska like never before. About probably eight and a half foot bear. Got a lot of blonde in him. Woke up this morning, wind was blowing really bad. It froze in pretty solid on us. And yesterday afternoon, we'd worked this coastline and we saw some pretty fresh bear signs. So we thought, let's work this coast today. Let's work up here. We'll, we'll uh, hit this low tide, see if we can see a bear out digging in the tide line. And uh, sure enough, got over here and there's a bear on me. <laughs> He's on the wrong side of the inlet. And uh, we'll wait and see how this saga unfolds. We're right where we need to be glassing anyway, so kind of cool when you're looking for bears to be able to see one, even if it's not one you want to shoot. Hunting in Alaska is a real challenge. Here we come, baby. You can't just uh, jump in your car and, and go hunting. The Alaska Peninsula is kind of a funny place. It's uh, awesome bear hunting. Probably uh, not as well known as Kodiak, but uh, every bit as big of bears and great opportunity. It only opens every other spring and every other fall. That is what you call a certified plane driver right there, buddy. Rolling in command. This isn't the Caribbean. <laughs> We've got to plan it well in advance. We plan all of our hunts probably about 12 months in advance. Uh, gear's got out all over the place. Setting our base camp here pretty quick. Got your big one. You get call. It's still a late spring and, you know, still lots of snow and things aren't greening up yet. We ended up uh, taking two days getting in because of weather. He's right on the edge of the Maldives right there. There's our first bear, you know. I mean, probably 900 yards from camp, we turned around and spotted it. That's a quick size bear. Springtime in Alaska is not Palm spring. Finally got the last load in. I'm turning around packing stuff in. I'm like, holy smoke, there's a bear right there. So, ha! Tell you what, I couldn't believe flying in. It's all you go along anywhere's along this coastline, it's just covered up bear trails. Starting to feel like spring. There's a bunch of sandhill cranes here, all kinds of hawks. We're seeing a bunch of ptarmigan. It's uh, it's springtime. It's Alaska. We're on the Alaska Peninsula. It's the second day of the opening of the spring brown bear hunt, and it is on, baby. You know when. When you're hunting trophy class brown bear, last thing in the world you want to do is put a bullet where you don't want one. You know, it's always a great idea once you get out here, you, know, you got a big heavy caliber rifle, you've been transporting it all over the place. Get set up and make sure that bullet's going where you want to. I like to shoot a 300 grain bullet or bigger if I can. About an inch high, right where I want it. Go take a ponder at that baby. Yep. Pretty well dead on. I'd call that good. I got three down, nothing in the chamber. Two in my pocket, six in my bag. 
Right. Good luck, gentlemen. Good luck, Bruce. guys. Kill a big one. Right. Ready to get on. This past year, we did quite a few hunts. We also fished quite a bit. We fished like crazy all summer long. I got to say that my most favorite hunt that we do would be the moose hunt. So this trip, uh, Miss Ruth decides that, you know, she shot her moose now. She's ready to step it up a notch. She's ready to take a brown bear. You know, hunting is, is what I do, it's, it's my life. I just love it. We just kind of take every opportunity that we have to, to get out there and, and do something. I think that wind switched on us a little bit. You know, she's pretty tough, she's a tough little gal. She'll get out here with me and, uh, you know, she'll put her time in and, and she'll glass with the best of them. Uh, we've got a big animal about five miles out, hanging right on the edge of the willows, kind of halfway down in the dip, so we don't have a we don't have a good silhouette of the animal. All we gotta do is wait for old Mr. Brown Bear to step up. Rain, rain, and more rain. Man, it's just ripping. Oh, yeah. You always plan a day or two like this in this country. <laughs> you know, on this trip, we got my, my good friend Lonnie and my good friend Chris Kobuck. You know, they're <laughs> a lot of fun, hard hunters, real knowledgeable. You know, they're the kind of guys you want with you if something goes wrong. Man, that looks good. What's for breakfast? Breakfast burritos. Garlic, onion. We better be planning on walking about 50 miles after that, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ruth and I load up and, you know, we're headed towards the ocean. You know, we're uh, going to look for some new country, maybe catch a different angle. But it's acting like it's got some place to go, don't it? About probably eight and a half foot bear. Got a lot of blonde in him. Yeah. It's real easy to move in this country at low tide because it's got a nice tight set, packed sand beach. Lewis really values my opinion on things. We discuss on what the plan is for the following day. We work really well together. It's one thing about these hunts, you know, I've been lucky enough now to where I've reached a point to where I don't have to pull the trigger for me to have a good time, you know, as long as, uh, you know, a little bad weather, don't hurt me none, I kind of like it actually. We've seen a lot of bear tracks, now we're getting really excited. Probably three miles from camp to where we climb up the bluff and, uh, you know, we're stopping and glassing. Sure enough, there's the bear on me. <laughs> He's on the wrong side of the inlet. And uh, looks like Lonnie and uh, Chris are frantically pumping up the boat. And they get across that water. That bear's in deep trouble, I can tell you that much. <laughs> we can see the tide coming in, too. By the time the stalk was over, the tide was in. And them boys wasn't making it back to camp. Big daddy to the rescue. <laughs> I loaded up in a little Zodiac and uh, ran over there and <laughs> picked him up. And... Hey, if you'd have seen the bear we saw, you would have done it too. It was very good. There was no question whether it was a shooter or not. 
Yeah. Next morning, I, we can't hardly wait to get out. On this hunt, we had a Zodiac in case you have to move quite a bit. Seems like it was deeper towards the shore here, wasn't it? If you get up here, you want to take the second channel. Plaska Peninsula is kind of different because big tides, big country, and uh, it's shallow water. So, you know, sometimes it just seems like you got four, five, six hundred yards of, uh, of land during low tide. So it's, re it's really a difficult spot to hunt. I'm looking for something really, really big, and uh, you know, hopefully I'll be lucky enough to get one of us a bear. My first priority is Ruth. Now, if we can make it happen for her, it's going to be a good hunt for me. Place to cover with fox, isn't it? The race was on after that, buddy. I tell you what, you know, hearts are pumping and you know, adrenaline's rushing, and we got all the way to where the breakers were the ocean and saw lots of signs. we spotted a brown bear. The brown bear was about a mile away, way up high on a ridge line. About 100 foot, just right above the ocean. Skyline, sunshine off of him. Beautiful bear. Get out gear to that corner down there. We was going after that baby. Got one brown bear. He's coming straight up that ridge this, this way, and we're hoping that He's going to stay where we can get to him, but he's coming pretty quick. So what we're going to try and do is try to get closer to this edge and either get up on that ridge with him or hope he comes down with us. Not sure if he's a bear I want to shoot, but I'm sure he's a bear Ruth wants to shoot. <laughs> so get him, boy. <laughs> get in there, we climb up on the bluff, and uh, once you get in there, it's lots of big alder patches. So we're kind of slipping down and glassing. Two feet down. I can't see it. Huge, dude, I can't believe you can't see it. Huh? Right there. Oh, to the left, okay. You can see the drive off. Oh, yeah. I could not believe the size of that brown bear. He was huge. We got the bear. He is at 479 yards, right in the trees right oh God, there. God, you can down. see him with your naked eye, and he's asleep. Laid up in a big patch of alders, tighter than a drum. No way to get anywhere near him without getting busted. Good job. Thanks. We're going to get right on his edge right here. We're going to slip along this edge. We're going to be across the field from him. But if he's sleeping, we're just going to crawl to him. We're going to crawl, put the rifle on him, crawl, put the rifle on him. right there yeah halfway across the field yeah we're gonna try and work around here and get behind those and walk straight to them 
cut the distance between us and him. Okay. We were able to get within 90 yards of the bear. And, uh, you know, we sat down and, and we started to wait. Probably at least eight and a half foot, I'd say. And we started to wait. And we started to wait. Waited till he woke up. Watch him, he was moving. Good enough. Okay, we know it's a boar now. That's a good thing. We're hoping he gets up out of the office and walks our way. If he does, we're all set up on him. If he doesn't, uh, we're gonna have to change plans, so. Unless you got this shot, a really good shot, man, shoot it all. Okay. He's going the other way, Lewis. Just hang tight. Let him go. Let him go. I lost him. He's coming out now. Let's just hope he turns to the right. He's walking away. Yeah, that's all right. Shoot him a little further back, Ruth. I'm pretty steady. He's running across the field, Lewis. He's in the grass. He's in the grass. Big Tim on the camera. We're hoping he gets up out of the office and walks our way. <clears throat> he does, we're all set up on him. If he doesn't, uh, we're gonna have to change the plan. So. Hope he gets up. He's running across the field, Lewis. He's going across the field. He's in the grass. He's in the grass. He's across the field. And he's getting ready to lay down. We knew we had a solid hit. He turned and he ran, and to us, he looked like he went over a little knob. Okay, let's watch him. 149 yards, so he's down. And Miss Ruthie's got her first bear. I was just shaken and I was so excited. I could not believe that I had finally shot a brown bear. Probably close to eight foot. About a four year old boar. He was gorgeous. Man, it worked out like a champ. Had him down wind and you know, had the wind in our face and we walked right up on him and uh, you know, got plenty of time to get set up and uh, get, you know, Miss Root set up to where she had a nice, comfortable shot. You let her rip, didn't you feel a kick, did you? No, I didn't. Told you, you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Adrenaline was going.
No, we were lucky because usually when I shoot something, I shoot it right at dark, you know, I end up getting back in camp, you know, about five, six hours after dark, but uh, got Miss Ruth's bear at a good time of day and we were able to get it skint out and get back to camp. No, all in all, it was just a great hunt, you know, good friends, good experience. Uh, not as many animals we want to see, but you know what? You know, we saw enough. Brown bear number two coming to camp. How was it? Long. <laughs> Boy, that sucker is blonde, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that thing. Oh yeah, that's a fur ball, man. Let's lay this bad boy out. We made 30 miles. Look at that. That's pretty. We cut in on that big flat below the cliffs, that real big flat right below the cliffs. Yeah. Got about 10 feet above Lonnie and looked out and he was between two alder patches. You can see the top of his back glowing. They ran into the bear that was making all the tracks on the beach and uh, they actually got into the spot where we were, where we were glassing our bear. Nice pause. Wow. Boar, huh? Yeah. Once it started happening, it was on, you know. Bear number one, bear number two, back to back. Awesome, guys. So now what do we do? Steaks. 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 Red meat. There are no vegetarians in this camp. Backstrap at Brown Bear Camp. You can't beat that. Cooking with the Cajun. That's right, buddy.